My name is Loli Adalia. So um, I've been assigned as a uh, presiding officer. I'm Dr. Nandita Maisna, uh, assistant professor, Brimangol College, and I have been deployed by the director of education U uh, for the upcoming 12th assembly election. So as a PRO. Uh, since this is my first experience, and I'm very privileged to <coughs> being assigned in this uh, election uh, in the year of 2022. So it is like. Uh, intimidating as well as uh, I know that I can do it. I think EVM is a very uh, this thing which we can do it purely because ballot paper we can manipulate the candidates or anything we can manipulate or even sn like snatching of the boots it is much easier for the uh, for uh, the ballot papers ballot box and all but EVM is, is much better is a better option. It's a very uh, a new and nice environment. It is but uh, very uh, an upliftment. Apart from my uh, the, the, this thing, education line, so teaching and uh, learning process. So this is much. Uh, this is a, has been a turning point, I should say. Like it has changed my confidence after attending this meeting. Uh, sorry, training. Manipur is one of five Indian states currently voting in a new Legislative Assembly. Polling is being held in two phases on February 28 and March 5 this year. The exercise, aside from political aspects, requires massive personnel and logistical coordination. The state's chief electoral officer decided, among other measures, to set up 600 polling booths managed exclusively by women, excluding security personnel. We spoke to some of the women deputed for polling duty and to the returning officer for assembly constituencies 14 and 15 to get a sense of why this measure was taken and what sort of impact it may have. So today we have the last round of training uh, for the women polling personnel of 14 Yai School and 15 Wankai AC and uh, we are making sure that they know exactly what they have to do when they go for the poll day on 28th February. The first reason was uh, because of uh, there was a exigency in terms of how when we started taking requisition from all the other departments for elections, we found that there were not enough men to man all the polling stations. So we decided to actually uh, requisition women instead because there were a large number of women in government service, especially in sectors like education, where there are almost 60 to 70 percent uh, amount of women in departments like education, social welfare. So we have requisitioned uh, women, uh, government servants from education department, social welfare department, MSPDCL, uh, horticulture, so, so from so many departments all over the district and we have been training them for two, uh, four rounds. This is the last round of training before we go for the polls. So we have been doing hands-on training and making sure they know how to operate the EVM machines, how to plug it in, take it out and you know how and so even if there's a problem we have ECIL engineers stationed with us we have sector magistrates magistrates who have been trained in case of any malfunction they will go on the spot and replace it so we have got everything covered uh, so far the women polling personals who have come for training they're very enthusiastic very eager to learn some of them have actually done duty before poll duty before in the 2019 Lok Sabha elections and this time we are having like both uh, 14 and 15 Yai School and Wankai assembly constituencies completely being conducted by women polling personals. It's incredible to work with them and uh, I learn from them because they also have a lot of experience. Many of them are assistant professors, much older than me. They have been in service for, uh, you know, 20, 30 years. So they also have a lot to say and they are very eager to learn. We have been given... Uh, there's something called a booth app also, which has to, uh, they have to give the attendance of the voters on an app. So we've been teaching them how to do that as well. Apart from the normal forms they have to fill and the EVMs they have to operate. So, so far it's been fun as well as, uh, you know, tiring at the same time. But so far, challenging, I, as well. challenging definitely, definitely. So we have 88 polling stations. There'll be four 
a uh, number of person for each polling station. So altogether 88, we have around 360 people, but we also have reserve personnel in case anyone falls ill or anything. So we have trained around 400 women polling personnel for Yai School and Wangkai. So we have uh, made sure that they have to follow the COVID protocols. They have to mask up. We'll be giving them COVID kits, uh, which has masks, face shields, uh, sanitizers, not just for them, but also for the voters in case uh, they require any mask, in case any voter that comes without a mask. So we'll be having sanitizer, uh, sanitization process. We have Anganwadi workers stationed in every polling station who will be thermal scanning in case there are any voters with high temperature, we'll take them aside and we will make them uh, give their vote only after everyone else has given their vote. We'll also be making sure that the queue is staggered in the sense that uh, there's a, a six, six feet difference between, you know, one person and the other to make sure that it's as safe as possible. And we also don't want to deny any vote to anyone as possible. So even, uh, you know, even those who are showing some COVID symptoms or anything, they'll be kept aside and they'll be allowed to vote after everyone else has voted. I think the first time we had women polling personnel in Manipur was in 2019 Lok Sabha elections and in that time yeah school was completely again manned like you said by uh, women polling personnel and it was a very successful one it was done very peacefully and uh, there was no complaints. So actually, uh, I got a lot of reports from the previous uh, officers that in fact, women actually perform better. They're more successful and they were very careful and very cautious. I think it's because uh, sometimes men tend to feel very overconfident and uh, they tend to make mistakes because of the overconfidence. But in, in the case of women, they're more careful uh, and they're always, uh, you know, revising and checking in case something is wrong. Another thing is, I think women are better conflict resolvers. Uh, I think they know how to handle situations in case it gets, uh, you know, in case people start fighting or there's some disturbance. They know how to calm people down. They know how to uh, persuade them. Uh, so that things go smoothly. So I think they have the skills from, you know, social social conditioning, I guess. Yeah. We have something called Mission 300. So uh, four polling stations of Yai School and one uh, polling station of Wankai, which recorded a slightly lower than average uh, percentage of people voting. These polling stations, we have been focusing on them and we have had a lot of sweep initiatives, uh, you know, where we are trying to engage more people to come out and vote. And I think women will play a very big role and the fact that we have all these women polling personnel, I think more women will feel encouraged to come out and we even have creche centers in case women with child, uh, if, you know, if they can keep their child for a while and then, they, yes. And we also have in some polling stations, we'll be having medical Medical personals also. So in case they can take, you know, the initial, uh, the, uh, I mean, any kind of health checkup if they want to get done. And uh, we'll be having some of the vaccination po points in many of these polling stations also, so they can get vaccinated as well. So we're trying to have uh, many of these things, you know, three, two, multiple things at the, happening at the same time in this uh, model polling, uh, in this polling station so that people feel more engaged, not just as a uh, you know, place where they can come to vote, but they, where they can actually engage with the community and they can actually get something out of it. Initially, I was, I had to do a lot of reading and we've also uh, been trained by the CEO office. So we've also been trained by the DC. Everyone has been very supportive from the CEO to the DC to all my election team. I don't think I could have done it without an amazing, robust team of people who have been, con who have been helping conduct elections for, you know, 20, 30 years. So I have an amazing staff who have always uh, been able to, you know, uh, guide me even when I'm uh, find it a bit difficult to understand. So I've had the support of an amazing team and we have been doing things for the last uh, three, four months, you know, when since the election process started. We have people deputed from different departments as flying squad teams, static surveillance team, sector magistrates. So I've been working closely with them as well. We have been going for lots of trainings, lots of video conferences. And I feel that I have learned so much in the last uh, three months than I did in the last one, you know, one and a half years. So I think this has been a great experience for me and I think even if I go to you know another post or department I'll be able to uh, take this forward to take the learning forward and even if I fall short in some ways I hope that you know it'll be a learning process for me and I'll be able to do better next time.